The Dell XPS 15 from 2020 is a fantastic device, and it's one of the first computers to really want to pull me away from my MacBooks. But the coolest part is, you can upgrade this thing. Oh yeah! Today we're going to spend some time upgrading my base model XPS 15. So can we do it? Let's find out. Those are expensive components. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And we're going to put that to the test today because we're going to upgrade this XPS 15 9500. And let's just hop into it. So one of the cool things, again, I'm predominantly an Apple user, so I don't get this kind of opportunity because a lot of the components of a MacBook are just soldered down to the motherboard. But here we've got some extra slots that we're going to take advantage of. So we're going to use this 970 EVO Plus M.2 NVMe uh, solid state drive that we're going to install. It's one terabyte. And because we couldn't, I got a little overexcited. We're going to install 64 gigabytes of RAM. Is that too much? Absolutely. Is it going to be awesome? Yep. And then we got some little heat sinks that we're going to put on top of the memory. So let's get, I'm just, I'm so excited. Uh, you guys have been asking me a lot about what the internals are of this base model. And I figured if we're going to do that, we might as well upgrade some of them so you can see it at the same time. And I did buy this little fix it kit. Step one is to remove all of the screws on the back panel of the device. And again, like I said in the accessory video, I absolutely bought this iFixit kit for the purpose of upgrading this machine. I knew the second I bought it that I was gonna have to upgrade it. Like for what I spent on the solid state drive and the RAM, like that's how much one RAM upgrade costs on the MacBook Pro. And if I were to take the MacBook Pro 16 and upgrade it to 64 gigabytes of RAM, it would cost double what I spent on this RAM. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that the everyday dad is gonna wanna start unscrewing stuff and building it in and hopefully won't brick his machine. If I brick this machine, this video won't go up. So if it's up, spoiler alerts, we probably succeeded. Now I did actually take this off earlier uh, just to make sure that I could because I haven't upgraded a laptop in a very long time. Now this should all, basically just be plug and play. But you know, you don't ever wanna like purposefully break your laptop on camera if you can avoid it. I mean, I guess that would get clicks, but I'd prefer to have the laptop than the clicks from breaking the laptop, right? Right? I, mean, I guess if it's enough clicks. So yeah, you gotta unscrew these things and then getting this off the first time was kind of a pain. You do have to make sure you have some kind of a pry bar. So this is the inside of my Dell XP, here we'll put this over here. This is the inside of the Dell XPS 15. Again, this is the base model. You can see we've got the RAM chips right here. We do have two slots for an M.2 solid state drive. So I'm gonna leave the one that's already in there in there because this has the operating system installed on it. And we're gonna install this faster one in the slot over here. You can also see how big these fans are. Now, one of the cool things that's gonna come out with the 17 inch laptop is the cooling system. They're gonna move away from these cooling pipes. They're gonna move to a vapor chamber system, which I cannot wait. It's still, as of the making of this video, the 17 inch was not yet ready to pre-order. I cannot wait for it to be ready to pre-order. So let's get this going. So step one is we do wanna disconnect the battery so we don't accidentally fry any of these components as we're messing with it. And let's start off with the RAM because the RAM is gonna be the easiest part. Now when it comes to the RAM, and this is, look at how easy that was. You just take these two tabs, pull them apart, and then the RAM slides up. So this is one of the, what, the four gigabyte chips that came with it. I got the eight gigabyte version. And so we'll set that aside. We'll pop these out, set that aside. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll sell those. We'll, we'll make something cool out of it. I've got literally no use for it um, because even my gaming rig has more RAM than this. So I can't, I don't wanna put like, RAM that doesn't matter in it. So I don't know. What are some cool things that you can do with RAM that you don't need anymore? Leave comments below. These are 32 gigabyte each, which is just insane. This thing will end up having more RAM in it than my iMac Pro, which has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, first chip in, second chip in. And it's just that easy. Like that's, I really wish all of my computers could upgrade so easy. Like, look, that took 30 seconds. Now, this is the one that I'm most excited about because I always need more storage space out of my computers, especially when you're a big video, you do a lot of video editing like me. And we did do, uh, so we are gonna test once we get all this done, if this was even worth it. Like, yes, this was kind of like a cool science experiment of an Apple guy upgrading his computer for the first time ever. Um, but was it actually worth it? Like, did, did we get any performance boosts out of it? Um, and we did do, we did a test through Premiere, and then we're gonna do another test immediately after this. And check that out. That is a gorgeous, like, can you believe that this is one terabyte of solid state memory? 
That's nuts. Like even my 512 gigabyte like external solid state drive is way bigger than this. So this one should also be very easy. Where do we just plug it in? And we should be, let's screw it down, and then we should be good to go. Now the problem we're going to run into is this did not come with any screws or anything, so we'll have to buy a separate screw for that. But just for purposes of this test, we'll do it this way real quick to see if it works. Let's put the little heat sink on it because this solid state drive that comes with it has a heat sink, and they do have a tendency to get kind of warm during load and in use. So I bought a little extra heat sink just to put on top of this one to make sure that we don't have any thermal problems when we start using it. There we go. One heat sink applied. This is harder than I thought it was gonna be. I don't have delicate enough hands for this. There we go. Okay. Heat sink applied, and that should be it. We have now greatly enhanced both our active memory and our storage capacity on the computer. So let's plug the battery back in, and then let's boot this thing up and see if it's still, if it's still working. And again, if it worked, you're still watching the video. Hooray! We were able to figure it out. Okay, battery. There, battery is seated again. Let's screw this back on. Sans one screw that we will have to buy another one for. Do really like this small electronics toolkit. Perfect for uh, making sure that you can actually do the things, the crazy things that you want to do. I mean, it's not that crazy. And a lot of you have, you know, it's been fun reading the comments about the Windows uh, stuff because I used to be a very prolific Windows user. You know, I spent most of my life using Windows up till about three years ago. Um, and I had, I've never like straight up built my own PC from scratch. But what I used to do is I would buy like the cheapest tower and then just upgrade all the components in there myself. Once you're known to be an Apple user, when people are like, yeah, you're, you're impressed that you can upgrade this stuff. It's like, yes, I'm impressed. I haven't been able to upgrade the components in my computer in years, in years. It's wild, like I'm still just, once you start paying Apple tax and then finding machines that don't make you pay the Apple tax, it's pretty wild. If only I wasn't so in love with Final Cut Pro. Hey, and it booted up, excellent. So at least I plugged the battery back in correctly. Here's hoping, here's hoping. Okay, we need to run the setup program, so continue. It's gotta set the memory up first before it can use it. Okay, that didn't take too long and now it is rebooting. So, did everything work? <laughs> the moment of truth. 64 gigabytes of RAM in a base model computer. Feels a little bit crazy. Crazy like a box. Let's go to the system settings and see if we have both the solid state drive and the memory. I will say the thing seems to be moving uh, pretty pretty darn fast. So this is the Dell XPS 159500 with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Let's see if we also have the solid state drive in here because that's gonna be wild. Okay, it does see it though. So here's disc one, here's the 90, 931 gigabytes. So we just have to partition it first. Boom, and there we go. All we had to do was partition it, it formatted. Now we have an additional, what is it specifically? 931 gigabytes on that solid state drive. So we have successfully upgraded, hooray. Now let's find out if it was worth it. Okay, so what I wanna do here, let's open up Premiere and we're gonna move over the test that we did earlier and we're gonna move it from the included solid state drive to the much faster Samsung solid state drive. And then we're gonna do the render test and see if we can beat five minutes and 30 seconds. And if we can, then it was worth it. And if we can't, well, then it wasn't as much, but it was still fun either way. Okay, so we moved all that stuff over. Now we will file, we'll open a new project over here on volume D. Okay, we've got render test open. Let's open this guy up. We've got the project in here. Now let's export it. And again, we did this previously 
and we got five minutes and 30 seconds. So now that it's got faster memory, so we're gonna export this using H.264 to the YouTube 4K Ultra HD. It says the file size will be 605 megabytes, and when we did this the last time, it took five minutes and 30 seconds, but hopefully with a much faster solid state drive and way more RAM, let's see what we got. So let's start ye oldie timer. And through the magic of video editing, okay, we, it says we have 10 seconds left, Seven, six, five, wow, it sped way up. So you can see we ended up with, I don't wanna stop it till it's done, 100%. Okay, so at 3.52.33. So we knocked off a minute and a half from render times by upgrading our RAM and our solid state drive. Now, are there more economical ways to probably get more performance out of this? Absolutely. I would take the CPU upgrade, I would put the GPU in here, probably have the RAM that I put in this thing, and it would probably cost around the same amount but give you much more capability. But this was just a fun experiment to see if we could do it and if it was worth it. So yes, we could do it, and yes, it was kind of worth it. I bet I could have a thousand Google Chrome tabs open now. And if you liked this video and you do like the XPS 15, because I very much like it, and you like to see what some of the best accessories are that you can use to make this an even better like experience, to make this an even better computer, I'll leave a link to my video that you should click right here. Click. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.